This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Monday, April the 8th, 2019. It's the birthday of Father William Joseph Chaminade, born in 1761 into the French Revolution. He was one of the faithful priests who defied the civil constitution of the clergy by refusing to take the oath. And despite being named an enemy of the state, he continued to serve as a priest at great risk to his own life. When a new government tried to make some changes back towards sanity, Chaminade was there to help. But the coup of 18 Fructador forced him across the border to Saragossa in Spain for a few years. It was in that time that he visited the medieval shrine of Our Lady of the Pillar and developed a powerful devotion to Our Lady. When he was able to return to France, he set to work on building a religious order which could restore the faith to post-revolutionary France. They were to be called the Society of Mary. We know them today as the Marianists. There are priests, consecrated religious, and lay people working together in various ways And the order's purpose is sanctifying people, especially the poor, and helping them to love God in daily life. Father Shamanad died in 1850, but today there are about 1,200 Marianists on four continents in 38 countries. Today in 1913, the 17th Amendment to the United States Constitution officially became law. It made a massive change to the philosophical structure of the legislative branch. Originally, the two houses of the American legislature balanced the two principles of governance by population and equal governance among the states. The House of Representatives were elected directly by the people, but the Senate was appointed by the locally elected officials of each state. It meant that each state's legislature had a real voice in national governance. It also meant that a state with one large city wouldn't be entirely governed by that one large city. The 17th Amendment, though, called for senators to be elected directly by the people, just like representatives. And because the senator didn't have a district, he or she could be elected entirely by one or two population-dense regions rather than by the state as a whole. And this threw the internal checks and balances of the legislative branch off kilter, and it's never really recovered. Since the 1920s, the use of the executive order and the practice of legislating from the bench have defined American governance. And since the changes to the rules of the Senate by the Democratic supermajority in 2010, that disorder has been even more pronounced. Finally today, in 1926, the German theologian who laid the groundwork for Christian Marxism was born. Jürgen Moltmann was born in Hamburg and was an idealistic youth. He idolized Einstein's scientific genius, and he idolized his grandfather, who was a grandmaster of the Freemasons. He applied to go to school to study science with a particular interest in physics, But after he took all of the tests, he was sent instead to the Luftwaffe and then to the front lines as part of the Nazi army. He was a POW for three years, and it was there that he first heard about Auschwitz and the other German death camps. The Belgian guards had taken to posting pictures of the camps for the POWs to see. It was as a POW that he met an American chaplain and began to take the faith of his youth more seriously. He returned to a ruined Germany and immediately set to work writing a theological system to help him and others understand what had happened. His scientific background, his suffering in war, his German reformed religious upbringing, and his American Protestant instruction in the camp became liberation theology in which God suffers with us and wants to make our lives in this world better. Sadly, his work is a mess of contradictions and facile theology which has done a good bit of damage to the world as a whole. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. And until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.